Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today we're continuing to talk about our featured novel, American Pastoral, and it's an American dream reconsidered. Is the American dream that great? Is it all that it's cracked up to be? Well, for the most part, yes. But some people have their doubts, and this this is what this novel is all about. But、uh, we summarized the novel last time,、uh-huh. and we didn't really tell you the ending. There, we got to the ending when he was going to decide. Between rescuing his daughter Mary or running away with Sheila the therapist,、hmm. we we don't want to give away the book's ending, Tom. Do that's we? That's right. So、no. that's why we stopped there. Otherwise, you're all going to get real lazy and not actually read the book. Well, sometimes、uh, you'll see things in newspapers and magazines, and you'll see this word "spoiler." Have you seen that? S P O I L E R. If you see the word "spoiler," don't keep reading. Reading because that's kind of a warning word to say, "Hey, we're going to tell you what happens in the book or the movie. Don't read."、Mm. So if you see spoiler, don't read ahead. But、uh, we didn't tell them the ending, so we're okay. Yeah, we are okay yeah. indeed. But、uh, today we're going to be talking about the author of our featured novel, American Pastoral.、Mm-hmm. Uh, the author, Philip Roth. He was born in 1933 in Newark, which was quite some time ago. But、uh, we're going to find out that he's still alive and kicking, at least at the time of、uh, recording our article. Yeah, he's quite、today. quite elderly. So、yeah. he's、uh, written quite a few books. So let's find out all about him now. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson now. Author Philip Roth was born in 1933 in Newark, New Jersey. He grew up in a lower middle class Jewish family around the time of World War II. During his school days, Roth was known for his witty sense of humor. He also stood out from his classmates due to his intelligence and his talent for writing. While attending college, Roth launched his own literary magazine. And began publishing his first stories. After finishing graduate school, he served in the U.S. Army for two years. During this time, Roth continued to publish stories and even published his first novel, *Goodbye Columbus*, which would later win him the 1960 National Book Award for fiction. After leaving the military, Roth began his academic career as a professor of literature and writing. While working as a teacher, he crafted many of his greatest works. A large chunk of Roth's writings is based upon things he saw and the people he met during his life. In fact, many of the protagonists in Roth's novels are similar to him. This has helped Roth expand his fan base, as readers feel like they can connect with Roth on a deeper level through his work. In Roth's stories. He gives readers insight into what it's like to grow up as a Jewish American. He writes about the difficulties of distancing himself from old traditions and dealing with the pressures of demanding parents and community religious leaders who expect him to follow their customs. Quite often, this leads his characters to feel conflicted and alienated from society. Yet his books are never depressing. As Roth's characters typically develop a satirical outlook on life and the world at large, at 84, Roth continues to pen novels that entice readers and influence people of all generations. Okay, guys. This is our portion of our literature unit where we talk about the biography or the background of our author. Today's author、um, is surprisingly still alive. He's eighty four, eighty four. Yeah. So、uh, he's done pretty well to、uh, stay alive all these years. I hope he's still healthy. Now he's、uh, Philip Roth, and he was born in nineteen thirty three in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, I lived in Manhattan for about 15 years, and Newark is just over、uh, the bridge or the tunnel,、uh, so it's pretty close. A lot of people who work in New York City or Manhattan oftentimes will live in New Jersey, and Newark is really close. That's also where an airport is located. If you ever fly in 
into New York, you might fly into Newark. Newark Liberty Airport. But、uh, again, that's Newark, New Jersey, which again is in the tri-state area there—New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut—and that's way back in 1933. Yeah. And he grew up in a lower middle-class Jewish family around the time of World War II.、Uh, we've got the middle class in the United States and around the world.、Uh, this is the lower middle class. They're doing okay, but well, they're almost poor if you're the lower middle class, but you're not the lower class yet.、Mm-hmm. That's right. And. And it was around the time of World War II when he was growing up. Now, during his school days, Roth was known for his witty sense of humor. Oh, I love people who are witty. If you're witty,、uh, you're funny. But the way that you are funny、uh, is through your use of words, and you're usually very inventive.、Um, You're pretty smart. Dumb people aren't witty. They might be funny, but they're not witty. People who are witty are、uh, also very intelligent and just have a great sense of humor. So, if you have any friends that are witty,、uh, you should count yourself lucky because they're fun to hang out with. Indeed, they certainly are. Witty means they're intelligent, of course, not just funny, but、uh, their sense of humor has some intelligence、mm-hmm. to it. Right. And he also stood out from his classmates due to his intelligence and his talent for writing. So he stood out from his classmates.、Uh, that can be good and bad.、Uh, of course, most of us do want to stand out. We want to be better than the other students and stuff like that. But noticed、uh, for being talented, yeah. It, Exactly, but that also might make you the target of bullies. But in this case, he stood out because he was intelligent.、Uh, that's the state of having intelligence,、mm-hmm. which is when you are really smart. He also had a talent for writing. He could write really well. He probably wrote for the school newspaper and wrote funny stories that were、uh, that made the rounds in the school. And he was probably the class clown and stuff like that. He was also pretty ambitious. He worked hard because while he was attending college, he launched his own literary magazine and began publishing his first stories. And back then, we didn't have the internet where you could just start writing and publish a magazine on a website. No, he published it the old-fashioned way. You know, it was printed. So he had a lot of ambition as a young kid. If you launch something, it means you start something, you begin something, and we oftentimes will use that verb "launch" to talk about launching a business or launching a new product, something like that. Yes, indeed. This is a literary magazine. They are still around. People、uh, submit、uh, to these magazines.、There's、For example, a- New York Magazine's a literary magazine.、Uh, right. Also, the Paris Review, and there's also Granta.、Uh, that is a pretty popular literary magazine. So he launched his own. I don't know if it's still around, but he published his first stories and probably had writings from other writers as well. I think I said the New York Magazine. It's called the New Yorker. Okay. Okay.、Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. There is a New York magazine and the New Yorker. They are easily confused. Yeah, but the New Yorker is the literary magazine. Yeah, I've tried yeah. to subscribe to that, but、oh, really? they just won't.、Uh, they won't send out a Kindle edition、oh. to Asia here. I guess I got to figure out something else there. But in any case, after finishing graduate school, he served in the U.S. Army for two years. So he got out of graduate、mm-hmm. school. That's where he got his master's degree, probably in literature or something like that. And he decided. To be in the army for two years, or maybe he got drafted. I'm not quite sure, but in any case, he was in the military, the U.S. Army, for a couple of years. During this time, he continued to publish stories and even published his first novel, Goodbye Columbus, which would later win him the 1960 National Book Award for Fiction. Actually, Philip Roth won a lot of awards for his writing. That was just one of them, of course.、Uh, it was one of his first awards. Now, after leaving the military, he began his academic career as a professor of literature and writing.、Uh, I think he continued to write while he was a professor. So he was teaching a lot of young minds, and at the same time, when he'd go home and in his free time, he would be writing. Uh, if you have an academic career, it means that you、uh, are earning a living as a teacher. And typically, an academic career would be someone who's a professor. So you'd have to have maybe a graduate degree or a PhD. If you had already been successful as a writer, sometimes they'll hire you with a bachelor's if you're already famous.
Ah,、uh, true. So it would be quite、uh, fortunate if that were to happen to you. But again, he got to be a professor of literature and writing, and while working as a teacher, he crafted many of his greatest works.、Uh, craft here is being used as a verb. That just means you carefully construct、mm -hmm. something.、Uh, we often talk about arts and crafts.、Uh, there, craft is a noun. It just talks about、uh, things that you make by your hand and stuff like that.、Mm -hmm. Little. Sculptures and ornaments and things like that, arts and crafts. But here, craft is being used as a verb, and it's just saying that he actually worked very hard and、uh, put these stories together. Yeah, craft is different than just write.、Uh, we use that word craft because we want people to know that he searched for just the right word. You know, he didn't just write whatever came to his head first.、Uh, he was also known for writing、uh, a lot of semi-autobiographical. Books or themes. So when you'd read his books, you didn't know if he was talking about himself or the character. He even had a book that had a character named Philip Roth in it. So there.、Mm. So he was known for that. A large chunk of Roth's writings is based upon things he saw and the people he met during his life. This sentence tells us that he used a lot of his own life. In his writing, so that's why they say a lot of his writing、uh, revolves around these semi-autobiographical themes. Autobiographical means your story, your life story, but is written by you. You put the words down. So he, he spent a lot of time、uh, basing、uh, his stories upon things that he had in his own life. If something's based upon something else, it means it uses that thing as a source.、Uh, and we're going to talk more about. His writing, guys. But first, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest. 我是 Trevor. 今天我们要阅读的是文学单元 Unit Sixteen 的第二天课程。在今天的文章中，我们将会读到关于《American Pastoral》这本小说作者的生平背景。文章的第一段提到，作者 Philip Roth 出生于美国纽泽西，在一个犹太家庭中成长。我们看到这一段的第三句。During his school days, Roth was known for his witty sense of humor. 在他学生时代期间，罗斯以机智风趣的幽默感闻名。这句有一个形容词 witty， 意思是机智风趣的。这个字的名词是 wit， 当可数名词是说话风趣的人，当不可数名词是风趣的意思。例如 ，Jack is a man of great wit and passion. 杰克是一位很风趣且热情的人。此外 ，wit 当名词要表示机智的话，常用复数型 wits。常用的片语有 be at one's wits end， 自穷寂静，或束手无策的意思。例如 ，I don't know what I can do to solve my financial problem. I am at my wits end. 我不知道该做什么来解决我的财务问题。我已经束手无策了。另外一个常见的片语是 frighten 或 scare somebody out of their wits， 意思就是把某人吓得惊慌失措。例如 ，Don't scream behind my back, you scare me out of my wits。不要在我背后尖叫，你吓死我了。我们接着看到第一段最后一句的后半部分。Even published his first novel, Goodbye Columbus。Which would later win him the 1960 National Book Award for Fiction. 甚至出版了他第一本小说《再见哥伦布》。这本小说之后为他赢得西元1960年的美国国家图书奖最佳小说奖。本句的关系代名词 which 是代替前面的先行词 Goodbye Columbus， 冠带前面加逗号是非限定用法，或称为补述用法。当限定词有独一无二的特性，或是非常明确的时候，冠在前面就要加上逗号。特别是当限定词为专有名词的时候，所以我们在写作文的时候要特别注意。如果用形容词短句来修饰我们的爸爸或妈妈，记得要在冠在前面加上逗号，不然就会变成有很多个爸爸和妈妈了。我们在讲的是其中一个，例如 My father， 逗号 ，Who works as a high school teacher， 逗号。Thinks a student's character is more important than his or her academic performance. 我的爸爸是一位高中教师，他认为学生的品性比学术表现还要重要。
。此外，如果冠带是代替前面一个完整句子，也就是代替前面所提到一件事时，也要在冠带前面加上逗号。例如 ，Mary failed the test. 逗号 ，which made her father angry. 玛丽考试不及格，让她爸爸很生气。如果这一句的 which 前面不加逗号的话。就会变成 which 是代替 the test， 也就是这个考试让他爸爸生气，而不是考试不及格这件事让他爸爸生气。文章的第二段提到 r o s h 在离开军队后担任教师，并开始进行文学创作。我们看到这一段的第二句 ：While working as a teacher, he crafted many of his greatest works。当他以老师为业时，他精心撰写了许多最好的作品。Craft 在本句是当动词用，有精心制作的意思。例如 ，The sculpture is crafted by a famous artist。这座雕像是由一位知名艺术家所精心制作。Craft 也可以当名词用，有手工艺品的意思，相当于 handicraft，H A N D I C R A F T。例如 ，Tracy likes to decorate her room with traditional crafts。崔西喜欢用传统手工艺品来装饰他的房间。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 好，各位朋友，我们继续我们的课程。我们讲到了彼得·罗斯这里。这里 And、uh, we、uh, let's see. Can we summarize here?、Uh, he began publishing stories when he was in school, and he served in the army. And one of his great novels was called Goodbye Columbus. And he was also a professor of literature and writing. And while he was a teacher, of course, he crafted lots of his greatest novels. And lots of them are based upon things that happened in his life.、Mm -hmm. And in fact, many of the protagonists in Roth's novels are similar to him. A protagonist basically is the main character in a story or in a novel, and all the action kind of uh, uh, circulates around this person. It's centered around centered him. around him exactly.、Yeah. So、uh, basically, things don't happen unless this person is doing stuff. Okay, so protagonist is the lead character, and usually there's another character that fights against him, and they're called the antagonist. Anti against. See how that works. Protagonist is the lead character. Antagonist is the person fighting against him or having conflicts with that other person. You'll often see those two words if you take literature courses in college. Okay, so we know now that he used a lot of his own life in his writing, which is really interesting. But it also gave his readers this feeling that they knew Philip Roth. But you never knew if it was real in the book, or maybe partly it was true, or you know. So it was interesting how he used his own life experiences. Sounds like he had a pretty interesting life. Yeah, you know? and、uh, because of that,、uh, he could expand his fan base.、Yeah. Uh, this has helped him expand his fan base, as readers feel they can connect with Roth on a deeper level through his work. So I guess he's very good at developing characters, and he's got lots of experiences that he can draw on. So people see that and they think, "Hey,、mm -hmm. that happened to me. I'm like that person. I like Philip Roth."、Uh, Philip Roth, because of that, I can really relate. To him, I can connect with him on a very deep level. I know what he's talking about. So, in the sentence, we have the word "expand," which means to make something larger.、Uh, like when you blow air into a balloon, it expands.、Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I think is interesting about social media is that some of these celebrities who post photos of their real life、uh, for fans to see, and you can kind of talk to them as you post. Comments in Instagram, for example, or Twitter. You can talk back to them. It makes fans feel like they actually know these people, 
when they really don't. They're just seeing little parts of their lives. And I think the、uh, celebrities know that. Yeah. But of course, they're trying to expand their fan base、sure. as well. We want more and more fans, so we'll have more and more money. And、mm-hmm. of course, I don't know if Roth was doing that on purpose, but in any case, he had lots of fans because they could see themselves in his stories. Okay, moving on to the final paragraph here. It says that in Roth's stories, he gives readers insight into what it's like to grow up as a Jewish American.、Uh, it's a big deal. Their religion is,、uh, if they are Jewish, it seems to be that it makes significant.、Um, it influences their lives significantly. I would say,、uh, insight is that ability to have an accurate and deep understanding of something. Uh, some of my friends are really insightful. It means that they're kind of wise about life, and I like to hear what they think about different things because they seem to have a deep understanding of of、uh, things that they're that are going on around them. Insight. If someone's insightful, it's a really nice compliment. It means they have、uh, really deep、uh, points of view. You could say. And of course,、uh, Jews in America are a small minority, so lots of people don't really know about their lives. So he gives readers insight into what it's like to grow up Jewish, and he writes about the difficulties of distancing himself from old traditions and dealing with the pressures of demanding parents and community religious、mm-hmm. leaders who expect him to follow their customs.、Uh, sounds like a generation gap to me. He wants to distance him. Self from old traditions. If you distance yourself from something, that means you don't want to be associated with that so much. You don't hang around with those people, and you do other things so that people don't think of you as being that thing. To distance yourself, maybe in the past you were a criminal and you went to jail or something, but later on you try to improve your life. You want to distance yourself from your past self. You don't don't want to be a criminal. You want to be an honest person. Person working an honest job, earning an honest living. And if you deal with something, it means you handle it.、Uh, your job is to make sure、uh, you don't let the pressure get to be too strong or too heavy for you. You deal with it. He had demanding parents. A lot of Jewish、uh, parents are demanding.、Uh, I was going to say,、uh, being Jewish is not just religion. It's not just a religion that affects these people. They have their own culture, so it can be.、Um, Uh, a great advantage if you're Jewish and you work with other Jewish people,、uh, but it can also put a lot of pressure on you. So his parents expected a lot of him. I think some of us do have parents who want us to be great and successful, and you might feel like that's a little demanding. So he had to deal with this, and he also dealt with community religious leaders who wanted him to follow their customs, the culture.、Uh, he was representing the Jewish people, and so there was a lot of、uh, a lot expected of him. I, I would say. I probably should know more about Judaism than I do, since、uh, my wife's sister is married to someone of the Jewish faith. My brother converted to Judaism when he was in、uh, college, but I still don't know much about them. So maybe I should do some reading here. But in any case, he was、uh, trying to distance himself from those rabbis and those parents and stuff like that. And quite often, this leads his characters to feel conflicted and alienated from society. Conflicted、mm. means you're having Conflicts. You don't know what to believe.、Mm-hmm. Alienated means you don't feel like you belong to society. You you're kinda, isolated, right? Yeah, you're like an outsider.、Mm-hmm. You're a loner.、Uh, you feel like you don't really belong. And I guess the feels kind of the the characters feel that way because of these pressures from their parents, and they're young, and they don't want to do those things. They want to check some things out.、Uh, they're all conflicted. That's right. Yet his books are never depressing. If something's depressing, it makes you feel like you don't have any hope anymore. You're really sad.、Uh, you just don't feel like 
going forward. But his books are never depressing. It says because his characters are typically、uh, they have they they're kind of sarcastic. They have a st- satirical outlook on life, so they kind of look at life as kind of funny. They find it ironic. And that's their opinion or point of view of the world at large. When you see this word "at large," a phrase, the world at large just means the world out there.、Um, you know, they have kind of a funny,、uh, sarcastic take on everything. So they kind of laugh at things that other people would think, "Oh, this is so depressing." They just kind of find it ironic. Yep, satirical, which is from satire, which means you're kind of criticizing people by using exaggeration or sarcasm, irony, stuff like that. And so people might think he's kind of negative here by reading this, but here it says they're never depressing, which means they're probably uplifting. And he takes this satirical outlook on life. I guess he's kind of making fun of life.、Yeah. He's not being so serious about it. Oh, don't be so serious. Yeah, yeah, don't take yourself so seriously. After all, you're only going to be here. For a couple of years, and then you'll turn back into dirt like it started. But in any case,、uh, yes, it's a satirical outlook on life and the world at large, or in general,、mm-hmm. about everybody. And at the age of eighty-four, Roth continues to pen novels that entice readers and influence people of all generations. To pen is to write, and to entice means to kind of attract them and to tempt in- them. Tempt、yeah. them, and、uh, he's got these new ideas that. People want to learn more about, and therefore they can be influenced. So yes, he's going strong at the age of eighty-four. I wonder when his next novel is going to come out. Yeah, I was looking at some of his books.、Um, this particular book that we've been talking about, American Pastoral, it's very famous.、Uh, but he's also got the Human Stain. I remember a lot of people were reading that、uh, when I was in New York, and it came out in two thousand.、Uh, but he's won some great prizes. He won the Pulitzer Prize for this novel, American Pastoral. So. He's been、um, celebrated throughout his life as a writer, but I think、uh, his career is interesting because he wasn't just writing; he was teaching young writers at the same time. So I'm sure he's had a big influence on a lot of the people、uh, of later generations because he was a professor. Right now, guys, we're going to take a few minutes to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap up today's lesson. 文章的最后一段提到。Ross 喜欢在他的作品中加入他身为一名犹太裔美国人的成长背景。我们看到这一段的最后一句 ：At eighty-four, Ross continues to pen novels that entice readers and influence people of all generations. 罗斯现年八十四岁，他持续书写引诱读者和影响所有世代人们的小说。我们看到这句有个动词 entice， 是引诱、诱惑的意思。片语 entice somebody to do something， 就是指引诱某人去做某事。Entice somebody with something 就是指用某物来引诱某人。例如 ，The store enticed customers to buy its products with special offers。这间商店用特价优惠来引诱顾客购买商品。以上就是今天的课程，我们下次再会。That's it for today. Thank you for joining us. But please join us again for our program next time because we're actually going to go back to our featured novel, American Pastoral, and talk about some of the themes and ideas and why we think you might enjoy reading it as well. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye.